Greetings to all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank God for giving me such a wonderful time uh, to share a message that is intended to all the intercessors and believers. And the title of my message, which is not a teaching but a prophetic message to all of us, to all the churches, is uh, uh, the art of intercession, a call to the churches to intercede. I want to start this by reading a verse from the book of Genesis, chapter 15 and verse 13. It says, Then he said to Abraham, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and will serve them, and they will afflict them for four hundred years. God said to Abraham that his descendants, that is, the nation, the children of Israel, will be afflicted and will be bondage for 400 years in Egypt. And it happened likewise. And when we read ahead and go to the book of Exodus, chapter 2, verse 23, uh, sorry, Exodus chapter 12, verse 40, we read there that the sojourn of the children of Israel in the land of Egypt was 430 years. Is God inaccurate in his prophecies, prophecies and promises to his servants? God said they will be in Egypt, in the land of bondage for 400 years, but it took 430 years for the children of Israel to leave the land of Egypt to come out of bondage. Why? Let's go to Exodus chapter 2, verse 23 and 24 in the Bible. The book of Exodus chapter 2, verse 23 and 24. Now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage and they cried out and their cry came up to God because of the bondage. So God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac and with Jacob. The reason is so clear that for 400 years when the people of Israel were in bondage, we see no one crying out to God and no one interceding, no one groaning in their hearts and in their spirit. But here, after the current king of Egypt died, because of the hard bondage, the people of Israel start to cry out to God. Immediately when they interceded, when they cried out, when they said to God that they want to be delivered, God heard their cry and remembered the covenant that he made with his servant Abraham. There are so many prophecies and promises to our lives that we will receive the breakthrough, that we will receive the miracle and that we will receive the deliverance, but it doesn't happen. The reason is that we do not pray and we do not intercede. Why did it, did it too, take too long for Moses to come and step into the call of God? Because there, was, there were no intercessors in the land of Israel. Immediately after they cried out to God for help, God heard their cry and in Exodus chapter 3, immediately after that, God appeared to Moses in a burning bush. Till now, Moses was wandering in the land of Median, getting married to a Medianite woman, uh, giving birth to children and serving his father-in-law. Seems that he is not called by God. Seems that he has forgotten his call. When there are no intercessors in a nation, God is not able to fulfill his promises for that nation. I want to tell you, God intends to deliver our nation India. God intends to save our nation India from the hands of, his, of, of, of the enemy. God's plan is that none should perish in India, but all shall come to repentance. This is God's heart. But how can he do fulfill his purpose when there are no intercessors and when there are no prayer warriors in the church who groan in the spirit, who pray in the Holy Spirit. 
God never intends his people to be in bondage. Why would God say to Abraham, 400 years, your descendants will be in bondage? Because, because God saw that Abraham was himself an intercessor, but he did not pass on the art of intercession to his descendants to the next generation. Yes, he passed on circumcision. Yes, he passed on other laws, but he did not pass on the art of intercession. Today, what are we passing to our children? What are we passing to our next generation? We are passing all other things. We are passing the knowledge uh, of how to build a church, how to do ministry, but are we passing the art of intercession to the young generation? If we do not pass it, India will still suffer, our nation will still, still suffer. As Israel suffered 400 years in the land of Egypt, if only after 100 years someone would have cried out to God, God would have chosen someone to deliver. I am telling you, God is excited and he is eager to hear the cry of his righteous. But are we crying out for our nation, India? Are we crying out for a great revival to come upon India that will save India, that will bring salvation upon the land of India? The Lord taught us to pray in Matthew chapter 6. The Lord Jesus said, Pray likewise, Our Father in heaven, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. The first line of prayer, the first context of asking was to ask the kingdom of God to come upon earth. That means currently there is on the earth and in our nation not the kingdom of God but the kingdom of the enemy and prayer and intercession is intended to remove that kingdom of enemy and bring the kingdom of God in our nation India the very first line of prayer that Jesus taught was concerning a spiritual warfare was concerning a shifting of kingdom removing the kingdom of Satan and bringing the kingdom of God in India and the spirit of fear has gripped over many because of the pandemic. But God wants us not to focus on the physical situation, but focus on what He intends to do for India. He intends to revive India. He intends to revive every church by His Spirit. And He intends to save India. So let our prayer not be physical, but in the Holy Spirit. Let our prayer not be carnal, but be spiritual. Let our prayer be not concerning, concerning the physical realm, but concerning a spiritual prophetic realm that God wants to do. God has a great plan for your life. God has a great plan for your ministry and for the nation of India. But are we praying for that revival to come? Are we praying for God, God's promises to be fulfilled. This is a season where we have to not only read and meditate the promises, promises of God, but we have to pray out the promises of God. Lord, you said in your word that you want none to perish, but all to be saved, all to come to repentance. So we pray, Lord, as per your will, Lord, let none perish, but all come to repentance. With the groaning in the spirit and with our heart cry, let us pray to God that God would revive India, that God would bring a revival in our nation that no eye has seen and no ear has heard. This is a call and encouragement to all the churches and all the brothers and sisters who are listening to me to intercede and to cry out to God, to revive India, to save India. As Israel was in bondage for 400 years, Israel is the picture of India who is in bondage from so many years. This is a season where God is going to use intercessors to bring the greatest revival in the history of India and of all the nations of the world. Let us pray, Father, deliver India from the hands of the enemy. We pray, your kingdom come and your will be done in our nation, India. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you.